from Hollywood, it's Jim Kimmel Live. Tonight, Tyler Perry from Supernatural, Jensen Ackles, Judge James, and music from Dua Lipa. And now, hold on tight, here's Jim Kimmel! Interesting. I don't know if I'd call it an aha moment, but I was watching the NCAA tournament pretty much all weekend this weekend. Did you know, this is interesting, uh, the players on all the teams are college students. They're students at the school who then change into matching outfits to go play basketball. And then what a weekend. There were so many upsets. At this point, if you knew anything at all about college basketball, you're totally eliminated from your office pool. <laughs> We have 74 people in our office pool. Guillermo is tied for second place. Guillermo. Yeah! Second place, yeah. <laughs> and you don't know anything about... I don't have no nothing, idea. Nothing, right? Nothing, yeah. 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 Who do you have to win it? Uh, Villanova. <laughs> He's got Villanova to win it, and... I'm in 10th place. I could have been in 6th place, but I forgot to pick one of the games. I accidentally <laughs> left a blank, so and now I'm being punished for that. One of the more exciting characters to emerge from this tournament so far is a coach, Nevada coach Eric Musselman, who took his shirt off after his team advanced to the Sweet 16. Now, on Friday, after they beat Texas, the cameras followed the coach into the locker room, and this is why cameras probably shouldn't follow the coach into the locker room. 83-87 is the final score. Nevada wins its 28th game of the season. Good. What a game, man. Down the whole game. That's the. I think that's the locker room talk we've been hearing so much about. Nevada is headed to the Sweet 16, and once again, no one, none of the tens of millions of people who entered a pool on any of these major sports websites has a perfect bracket this year. All the brackets are busted, and we still have 15 games to go. But th and this is adorable. Two dogs, dogs named Ella and Petunia, picked all the games this weekend right. They had them bark once for the favorite and twice for the underdog <laughs> on video, and they did it, and they went 16-0, and 0, which is amazing. So we reached out to their owners, Leon and Pat Wellman, to see if the dogs could predict the games this week. And here they are, live from Eugene, Oregon, the incredible prognosticating pugs, Ella and Petunia. Uh, where are they? Oh, they're there. Okay. Ella. Excuse me. Ella and Petunia. Hey, guys. Yeah. I just, I wanted to get your picks for the, for the Sweet 16. Yeah. Okay, let's start with Kansas State versus Kentucky. Who do you like in that one? Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> we'll let them have some alone time and maybe check back in. <laughs> They're enjoying their victory. Speaking of madness, this is how Donald Trump started his day today. And before I share these, I want to say no two tweets have ever summed up a presidency quite like these two, okay? Number one, Sean Hannity on Fox and Friends now. Great, 8, 18 a.m. And about an hour later, a total witch hunt with massive conflicts of interest. <laughs> is it possible that our president is a bot? That, because there's no rhyme or reason for any of this. If anyone you knew tweeted that, you'd text them and say, hey, I think your account got hacked, because that didn't... <laughs> Over the weekend, Trump, for the first time, mentioned special counsel Robert Mueller by name. He hadn't done that before. He wrote, why does the Mueller team have 13 hardened Democrats, some big crooked Hillary supporters, and zero Republicans. Another Dem recently added, does anyone think this is fair? And yet there is no collusion. <laughs> Mueller's team has no Republicans, except, of course, for Robert Mueller himself, who is a Republican. <laughs> Although in fairness to Donald Trump, it is true that six of the 17 members of Mueller's team donated to Hillary Clinton's campaign. And one of the guys involved in this investigation donated to Hillary Clinton's campaign seven times. And you know who that major donor was? It was this guy. I think she's a wonderful woman. I think that she's a little bit misunderstood. You know, Hillary's a very 
smart woman, very tough woman, that's fine. But she's also a very nice person. I think she's going to go down at a minimum as a great senator. And I think Bill Clinton was a great president. Bill Clinton was a great president. Hillary Clinton is a great woman and a good woman. Lock him up. Lock him up. I don't know. It's, um... This is sources close to Donald Trump says he feels newly emboldened to ignore the advice of those around him and just say what he really feels. Which Does that mean that up until now he was holding back? <laughs> because he was calling Kim Jong-un Little Rocket Man and bragging about the size of his nuclear button. Was the, that the old and more judicious Donald Trump that we will miss one day? I hope not. Meanwhile, congratulations to Trump's BFF, Vladimir Putin, who was elected yesterday for his fourth term as president of Russia. He won in a landslide. His opponents were coincidentally died in a landslide, all of them. <laughs> Most of the reports, they don't even mention who he was running against because it doesn't matter. He was winning this thing one way or the other. There are widespread reports of ballot box stuffing in Russia, some of which was caught on surveillance cameras. This guy is shoving ballots in there like he's voting on American Idol or something. It's another one. And nobody seems to, like, notice or care that... But this guy won the... I think he won for style points because he just... Yeah. He was like the David Blaine of voter fraud. He just... Kept pulling envelopes out of his pocket and dropping them in. But, so there you have it. Vladimir Putin won, and now he can focus on his next election, ours. <laughs> you know, as you may or may not be aware, in addition to my work as host of this show, I am also a TV judge. My beloved bailiff, Guillermo, and I have been hearing cases for a long time now. These are real cases with real litigants in small claims court who inexplicably chose to let their cases be heard by none other than Judge James. This is the plaintiff, Sherilyn Looney. She claims the defendant received eyelash extensions at her salon only to cancel the charge on her credit card. She's suing for $302.50. This is the defendant, Jill Johnson. She maintains the plaintiff unknowingly gave her a much more elaborate eyelash service and therefore disputes the charge. It's the case of Lash of the Titans. Raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They're actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims to have their case decided here by Judge James. Hello. How are you, Josh? Good, thank you. Good. How are you? Good. The litigants has been swearing your honor. Thank you very much, Bailiff Guillermo. Oh, you can sit down. You can sit down, yeah. Thank you, Josh. All right. Let's see here. Sherilyn Looney. Yes. You are suing Jill Johnson for a total of $302.50 because Miss Johnson uh, received eyelash extensions at your salon, paid for that service, and then later disputed the charge with your bank. Correct, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson, you claim you were unknowingly given a much more expensive treatment than you expected, and that's the reason why you disputed the charge, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Ms. Looney, let's start with you. Your Honor, on September 20th, uh, she made an appointment with me um, for our lash bar to get the most expensive lashes. May I stop you for sure. one second? Are those dentures on your breasts? Yes, or eyelashes, but dentures, yes. Okay, okay, back to the story. <laughs> okay, so she made the most expensive appointment for the most expensive lashes. What are those lashes called? They're called 3D lashes. 3D lashes? Yes. Okay. Why are they called 3D lashes? It's an advanced technique uh, by master lash artists, and it's where they take three light lashes and make a little fan, and they put them on one lash. Master lash artists? Yes. So a couple weeks later, I get a letter in the mail from, I believe it was like Chase Bank, disputing the charge. I called her, and she told me she was going to bring the money in uh, the next Monday. She never showed up. Is this story true, what we just heard? Well, no, not, not entirely true. Which parts true. of it aren't true? Okay, so I uh, set up the appointment, showed up 35 minutes late, I believe, got in there, and the lady, the esthetician, explained to me that because I was late, they couldn't do the 3D lashes, but she could arrange the time to do the 2D lashes. Okay. So I sat down in that bed for three hours. She worked on my lashes, I fell asleep, and by the time I woke up, 
she showed me her work, she said, oh, I was able to do 3D lashes on you. And at that minute, I'm thinking, okay, so I know that's a different price, one. It's and a difference of $25. So I contacted my credit card company, and I went ahead and canceled my account. So that's exactly what happened. So you feel you should get that service for free? I'm not going to lie. I did feel horrible for canceling the transaction. And, you know, I know they perform and they did the service. So I, I, I did want to go with the intentions of paying them, but I just didn't go through with it. I just, you know, uh, but I, I was trying to be sympathetic. I know that the esthetician did a great work. So in your mind, you felt like you wanted to do the right thing, but it, you didn't actually physically with your body do the right thing. <laughs> um, okay. I am going to admit, I don't know a tremendous amount about eyelashes, but I did want to bring in an expert, uh, my Aunt Chippy, who has been wearing false eyelashes since she was a baby, probably. I understand you've done the 3D lashes on Aunt Chippy? Okay. Release the beast. This show to tell the truth, and the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You bet your life. Okay. Ed Chippy, were you outside smoking? No. Have you quit smoking? Almost. Remember, you're under oath. I said almost. Were you a virgin when you got married? Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? You're under oath. This is a courtroom. What is going on with this lady with you? I got one eye done. Did you ever take money out of my grandfather's checking account for the purposes of gambling, specifically video are poker? Are you crazy? You are under oath. You are out of order. Will Judge James demand restitution for the esthetician? Or will he side with Miss Lash and Dash? And will Aunt Chippy come clean about her degenerate past? I'm gonna hit you with that thing. I swear to God I am. Judge James' verdict when we return. Oh, wow, I hate to make you wait, but that's just how we do it. When we come back, we'll find out which side prevails in Lash of the Titans, so stick around. First, you know, I mentioned a minute ago, we are right in the middle of March Madness right now. And one of the things I enjoy about this tournament is they've been using some of the crew from inside the NBA um, for the college games, particularly Charles Barkley, who I enjoy. Sir Charles was on hand this weekend to dispense wisdom on a variety of subjects, some of which had to do with basketball, some did not. Charles, tell, tell the world who doesn't know, what do you do with your gum when you're done chewing it? I swallow my gum when, gum when I'm done with it, like every other person in the world does. <laughs> Nobody wow. takes the time to go get a piece of paper and throw gum in the trash. You just swallow your gum. If everybody would swallow gum, uh, if, it was, if it was bad for you, everybody in the world would be dead by now. So that's not true. <laughs> well, that is, believe it or not, that is only the second most ridiculous thing Charles Barkley said this weekend. The most ridiculous thing was he said this on the controversial subject of toilet paper thickness. Ernie tried to tell me that was a different than toilet paper one time, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. He tried to say that's the difference between one ply and two ply. There is. There's no difference. <laughs> Anybody that's had that mistake knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no difference in toilet paper. Oh, there is one a difference. One ply, two ply, it's no difference. Let me it's all something. the same. Now, hold on a minute. I can tolerate a certain amount of fake news, but even Sarah Huckabee Sanders was like, that is bull crap. <laughs> there is a... Difference between one ply and two ply, and I, to, I don't even know what the word ply means. And I know there's a difference. I just know one ply is fine for number one, but for number two, you have to double the ply. There's no, <laughs> that's it. This is not debatable. The only possible, only possible conclusion I can draw from this is that Charles Barkley has someone who wipes him, because otherwise. <laughs> Why else would he be using bus stop toilet paper? <laughs> By the power vested in me as a TV judge, I hereby sentence Charles Barkley to spend a week using one ply, followed by the rest of his life with two ply, and report back to me immediately. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the courtroom. It's time for the gripping and illegally binding conclusion to the Lash of the Titans. This sassy salon owner says she was swindled. 
This credit card canceling conniver calls that crap. And this aggravated aunt is getting agita. Judge James is about to rule. Let's listen. Are you the technician, the master lash expert, who applied the lashes to this woman's face? I was next to the lady you that You were applied. next to the lady. What has become of that woman? She is dead? <laughs> no, she's, she couldn't make it. She couldn't make it. When I was a baby, Aunt Chippy, did you or did you not drop me on my head? I think I did, because otherwise you would not be damaged as you are today. I swear to God. Um, okay. You know what? I have to say, usually I would go in the back and make a ruling, but I don't really have to make a, go to the back to make a ruling in this what case. What kind of ruling are you making? I am ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $302.50. I don't even understand. I think you may have actually committed a crime of some kind. So, Guillermo, arrest everybody except for these two right here. Okay. Including Aunt Chippy. I want her in chains. Good. I won't have to deal with you then. <laughs> I'll leave it to you. Don't hit me with it. <laughs> let's go this way. You kicking me out? Yeah, the case is finished. Your ass. Get out of here. I just got out by myself. I don't need no help. All right, Judge James has rendered his verdict. Let's bring the plaintiff in. The defense. Let's bring everybody in. This is my Aunt Chippy, who was neither the plaintiff nor the defendant. I don't know what I was. Judge James had some very serious questions to ask you, and you, I felt like you dodged a lot of them. He's a, he's a nincompoop. He really is. I mean, he's banging that hammer, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Who, Judge James? Yes, Judge James. You should be a little more respectful. Let yeah. me see the eyelash. Which one was it? This one. You can't see the different. Don't stop. Good luck. Pulling. Good luck. Let me watch. Sal, good luck. Let me come here. Good luck. I only got one good eye. Come on, over just there. let me see. Get out of here. Pull one. What's the matter with you? All right. There you have it, Aunt Chippy. What a loud mouth. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah. What you got? Best. Now we're done. Now we're done. Now we're done. On the next Judge James. Everything was okay. We were good relationship. The he offered me a camel for my daughter. A what? A camel. Ah, now she screamed at me before get, I was get, screaming. Get, 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 now she. How old was the camel? Hey, who's the judge here? <laughs> All right, tonight on the show we have music from Dua Lipa. Jensen Ackles is here. We'll be right back with Paula Perry. <laughs> And then this is her self-titled album, Dua Lipa from the Mercedes-Benz Outdoor Stage. Tomorrow night, Katie Couric will be here tomorrow. Katie Couric took me to get a colonoscopy. Because when you turn 50, you have to get a colonoscopy. And there, so we had, there were two camera crews, one on the outside of my body. <laughs> and then they had an intruder on the inside. And tomorrow night, we'll show you the results of that. Plus, Judd Apatow will be here. We'll have music from The Decemberists. Join us for tomorrow night's show. Our first guest tonight is an enormously successful actor, writer, producer, director, and Tyler. Starting on March 30th, he invites you to spend Easter weekend inside a very volatile marriage in his new movie, Tyler Perry's Acrimony. Please welcome Tyler Perry. <laughs> It's good to have you here. I feel like since the last time I, I saw you, you've written like 25 movies. It's, you made like an, uh, it's been it's been a while. I've been I've, I haven't been here in, in a minute. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You give me two minutes, I'll do a lot. Are you always <laughs> working like at all times? Yeah. Do you yeah. ever go on vacation or anything like that? Well, when I'm when I'm on vacation, I'm writing. So writing is relaxing to me. So I have a place down in the Bahamas. I've got a place in in Wyoming that I go and I write and oh. relax there. But. That's where I my see. stories are born. How do you decide on whether you're going to go to the Bahamas and write or to Wyoming and write? It depends on the story. If I'm writing a story that I feel is happy, I want to be in sun and light and open. If I want to, if it's something that's sad, then I want to be in the mountains in the cold. Oh. If it's something, if I'm writing Medea, I want to be with Aunt Chippy. It just all works. <laughs> it all works out. It all works. She is Medea. She is Medea. Oh yeah. She's Medea. She's Medea. Yeah. 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 She puts the mad in Medea. Yeah, that's, that's right. For sure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's, well, that's, that's fun. Is it fun or, like, do you relax? Do you go skiing or? 
fishing or anything it's, in Wyoming? It's fun. I just tried to learn how to snowboard. It's something about black people in water. I know this is a stereotype, <laughs> but down in the Bahamas, I'm learning how to swim. And you don't know how to swim. I don't know how to swim. And when I'm in Wyoming, I'm trying to learn how to snowboard. But it's something about water, in liquid form or, or, or <laughs> whatever. It's just, so yeah, man, when I'm out there on the snowboard, it's so funny because I don't know how to get up from the front. So I have to get up from the back. And you know, you put your, put your feet down, kind of put your butt up in the air and come up. And then you kind of turn around and come down the mountain. So that's the only way I know how to do it. So I came down, turn. Every time I get up, I turn around, I hear. <laughs> I see all these white folks grabbing their kids and running and screaming, he's coming down! <laughs> he's giant, coming down! There's a giant on the mountain. There's a giant on the mountain. <laughs> Man, and I couldn't find a black instructor, right? I could not find a black... Is that right? Snowboard instructor. No, Did not you... one. <laughs> they need an inclusion writer. I'm I could not, I could not find one. So, so I find this guy. I, I find this guy. I'm like, okay, he's got a black shirt. This will be cool. So I'll just use him. Black he's not black. Shirt? He's got a black shirt. So, so, <laughs> So he's like, dude, just, it's all going to be real cool, you know? Just go down the mountain, make sure you don't get your back edge car. Because if you get your back edge, you might hit your head a little bit, but you'll be cool. First thing I do, I get up, back edge catches. Bam, it's a concussion, man. It's like, bam. Oh, really? Oh, it's like that. He goes, dude, I told you not to hit your back edge. <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. So, like, I'm going to give you a good cut. Yeah, that's right. But I'm learning. I'm but learning. The snowboarding, I see, snowboarding is optional as far as a life goes. But swimming, if you're on, like, you know, in the, on the beach or whatever for a lot of time, it's dangerous to not know how to swim. No, it's not. You're on the beach. <laughs> no, no. So you won't go in the water. I, I go in the water, but, in, but I have a pool on, on the place. So okay. I go in the pool. And I go in the deep end, and I'm, I'm really, really, I've gotten really comfortable in the deep end. It's six feet, I'm six six, so I, it works out well. <laughs> it works out well. It works out well. But no, I want to, I want to be able to do it with my son, man. He's, he's, he's three years old. He's going down the mountain. He's in the swimming pool. He's like, look, pop, and he's in the water, and I'm like, I could, I couldn't save him if I needed to. So I, I'm like, yeah, I keep. There's something them. to think about. Yeah. So do you take lessons or anything like I started that? Started taking lessons, you and could I probably get Michael Phelps to come teach you to swim. You know? You know, you know, I needed somebody really big and strong, so I, I hired a Navy SEAL. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, and it didn't work. It, it, it was. He, he kind of quit. He, he got quit. It. Yeah, he's. <laughs> He's like, you're names. never going to get it. Never gonna. <laughs> He's like, you're never going to get it, dude. It was the same guy. Wow, that's very interesting. How old is your son now? Three. Three. I and congratulations on yours. Thank you very yeah. much. I read yeah. a story. I have a three-year-old daughter. Yeah. I saw a story uh, about something that happened this weekend. I don't know, maybe it didn't happen, but I want to ask you about it. You were at a charity art auction. Uh -huh. What was the charity? Were you at a charity? I was at, yeah, yeah. At, yeah. It's uh, Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles, and, oh. and Richard Lawson. They have this great charity where they do all this work with these kids. It's called uh, Waco, and it, I was really, really excited to be there. And there was this art that came out for auction, and um, it's, a, it's this beautiful painting of Sidney Poitier. I'm like, I've got to have that. Right. So I put up my paddle, and then somebody on the other aisle over there is bidding, too. It's Blue Ivy. Their daughter, Beyonce's Who's daughter. Like six years old. Six years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to teach you a lesson a day. I am just. And she keeps going up and up and up with it. I'm like, how, how far did Blue Ivy go up? She went up to $19,000. <laughs> she went up to $19,000. That's like three months allowance for her. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, I'm going, OK, well, had she gone up one more, I was going to have to let her have it. Yeah, but, but, right. But for me, I'm thinking, OK, it's charity. It's a good cause. Yeah. And I'm not letting this kid take this pain. From me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm going to teach you now, little girl. You're not going to get everything you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tyler Perry. <laughs> Here. His movie's called Tyler Perry's Acrimony. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the building you said we would live in. So proud of you. Thank you. Sorry I'm late, babe. Hi. I'm Diana. I'm Robert's fiance. That is Tyler Perry's acrimony in a very uncomfortable moment. Obviously a comedy. <laughs> it's obviously a comedy. <laughs> yeah. Tyler Perry's Acrimony. Yeah. It has the word acrimony ever been in the title of a movie before? I don't yeah, I think so, but for me I didn't know what it meant. Oh, really? No, I, I heard it on CNN once when they were describing the current administration. <laughs> so, acrimony, what does that mean? I go to the definition, and I'm like, oh, 
Oh, that's the name of my new movie, Acrimony. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it fits. It yeah. fits. Yeah. Angel Rogers amazing in it, man. What, yeah. What is the movie? What is the idea behind the movie? You know what it's about? It's about all those people in life who, who hold on to things and won't let go, and they only see it their way. They can't. They, they miss all the good that could have happened had they moved on, rather than staying focused in the past. So this is about what happens when you can't let go. Do you know people like that? <laughs> 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 no, no, Jimmy, I don't know any. Because the story is of a guy who becomes very successful, yeah. and then his ex-wife is not that excited about it. That, yeah. that's, that's pretty much it. And yeah. do you know any like that? Because there's, there's quite a few that I know, man. But, but yeah, no, she's not that excited about it. But, but, yeah. but it, what it is about for me is just getting people to just move on. Just not, don't spend so much time in your life looking back in the darkness. There's a, there's a future, there's light. Do you think people ever, though, are self-aware enough to see themselves in a character like that, like Taraji P. Henson's character? I think they would maybe look at it and go like, whoa, whoa, boy, she's crazy. Yeah, well, Not realizing they're the same way. That's exactly why I did it, because sometimes film is a, a mirror for people where they can go, wait a minute, am I doing that? Or you can take somebody who's doing it and go, hey, let's go see this movie. <laughs> Anybody look familiar <laughs> up there to you? Yeah, yeah. I know you do your shooting at the studio you own in Atlanta. Isn't that something? Yeah. And you rent it out to, like, uh, Black Panther was shot there. Yeah, yeah. What else was shot there? Uh, uh, Walking, Walking Dead, Dead was shot, was shot there. Shot there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, the Universal shooting there, uh, BET owned, everybody. It, it's really, really fascinating. Did they try to get you to come be in, like, Walking Dead or Black Panther or whatever, since you're there and owning the studio? No, but who wouldn't want to be in Black Panther, man? Are you kidding? Would you Wakanda said... forever! <laughs> No, I enjoy, I, I actually enjoy watching it. I'm so happy what, what what's happening right now because, you know, for a long time, I was the only person of color out there for like 10 years trying to get things done and letting people know that there are other people who, like me, who want to tell their stories who hadn't had an opportunity. So to see these moments and all these people getting their chance, like David, uh, D uh, Donald Glover and, and uh, you yeah. know, Black Panther and Issa Rae, yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm celebrating all of them. Man. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That's got to be a very rewarding. Yeah, it's very rewarding. Yeah. Very rewarding. Yeah. We're bringing Medea back. Maybe Medea goes to Wakanda would be a great. <laughs> I could I could see me being murdered now. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, kid, Medea, Medea Wakanda, welcome to Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda forever. I, I got a Wakanda ass weapon for you. <laughs> How many Medea movies have you made? Hmm, I don't know, man. Okay. Eight, eight or nine? Eight or nine? More than that. Okay. Is you made ten. Ten, wow. Now, I was wondering uh -oh. if in 30 seconds' time, uh -oh. put 30 seconds on the clock, oh, I guess. how many of them you can name. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Tyler Perry, begin. Diary of a Mad Black Woman? Yes. Uh, Medea's Family Reunion? Yes. I Can Do Battle By Myself? Medea Goes to Jail? Yes. Uh, Medea's Big Happy Family? Uh, yes. Medea Family Reunion? Yes. Say that? Oh, you said that one. Okay. Yeah. Meet the Browns? Y yes. And, uh, that it, right? <laughs> Come on, what's the... Oh, Boo, Boo and Boo 2. <laughs> yes, Boo, Boo, and Boo, Boo 2. 2. There's three more. No, Boo, Boo 2, and Medea Family Funeral. They haven't come out yet. What that's, are you talking about? Okay. Yes, Medea's Witness Protection. Yeah, oh, cool. my goodness, that's very cool. well. What didn't I win? <laughs> you didn't win. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't win the role we, in Wakanda. We got you a snowboard. Tyler Perry, everyone. Tyler Perry's Agrimony is much Hi, we're back to Silicon Dua Lipa. After 13 seasons and two different networks, you would think our first, our next guest would have busted every ghost monster and demon there is, but they just keep coming. You can see a special crossover episode of Supernatural with Scooby Doo. For real, next Thursday night on The CW, please welcome Jensen Ackles. Right. Wow. I, it's hard to believe that your show has been on 13 seasons now. How long have you been on? You, that, oh, 15 seasons. See, yeah. you got me beat. I'm just yeah. trying to keep up with you. That's a lot of seasons. It's a lot of seasons. You it's must, a lot of TV. You must like the people you work with. You must like the part, the show, all that stuff. I don't. I lost a bet. And <laughs> I do. No, How it's, old uh, were you when you started doing the show? Uh, let's see. I've been up 13 years. I got to do the math here. So it was uh, 27. 
So because I just turned forty last week. Oh, you just week, turned forty. So. Did you have a? a All right. <laughs> They're happy you're alive. Someone just goes, "Wow." <laughs> That I don't can, know if that was good or bad. That can be taken either <laughs> way, yeah. I'm guessing good, though. Look, by, just judging by your face, I'm going to say good. Well, thank you. Um, uh, what did you do for your 40th birthday? Did you have a big celebration? Uh, I had four. Four of them? Oh, well, really? Well, my wife thought it was, you know, she's like, oh, we're going to do a surprise party. And so uh, we had this great little surprise dinner. It was the day after my birthday. And, uh, and I thought that was great. That was it. Awesome. Great. But good times. Then the next day, it was another surprise. Uh, and it was another another afternoon type of uh, type of thing, and then uh, so that was great, good, done. I should say the first one, the very first one, was on my birthday, and it was my four and a half year old. I see. Oh, she that's... Threw, that was that was the only one that I really cared about. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she she dressed me up, and there was candles, and I had glasses that had a four and a zero on them, and there's a picture somewhere. Um, so that was uh, that was great, and then uh, the last and final one was a week later. Uh, we were up in Vancouver where we shoot Supernatural, and I just thought we were going to dinner with a couple of the crew and a few castmates, and uh, it ended up being about 460 people, uh, all crew and past crew and cast. Wow, everybody Of the past came. 13 years. It was all in one, one building, and it was, uh, it was overwhelming, to say the least. I would was, think so. They yeah. must like you, I guess, huh? Well, or it was the free booze. <laughs> <laughs> you own, a, what, a bar or brewery, or some combination of those two things? Speaking of free booze, yeah. uh, yes, um, I, I, we, we brew our own. My wife and I and my brother-in-law opened up a, uh, a, cra a, craft, a craft brewery That, in, that in explains Austin. it. Yeah. A brother-in-law, that's how you wind that's up investing in things like a brewery. Straight down. <laughs> how is it going? It's going really good. Uh, our, we opened, uh, we've been brewing now for, for quite a while, uh, but we finally opened the tasting room at the beginning of this year. And we thought we, you know, we didn't want to make too big of a deal about it. We thought we'd just kind of limp in and open it up and, on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh -huh. um, the line was out to the parking lot. It was like a two-hour line just to get into the building. Uh, like your birthday party. And, and, wow. <laughs> and, uh, wow. And, and so we scrambled, and luckily we had a couple of security people there. Uh, one of them, uh, well, they're both veterans. And they said, listen, we can put the, you know, the veteran bat signal up and get some vets here ASAP. It's a social media thing. And I'm like, sure, great, do it. To keep, to maintain order. To, to help, like, whatever we need. Bar backing, uh, you know, washing dishes, changing kegs, whatever it might be. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> and two guys stood up in the brewery. They were like, yeah, what do you need us to do? <laughs> so you allow the security and they still guys work for us to now. drink on the job. I do no, that as well. No, these guys were they, were they were patrons in the bar, but now they work for us because they immediately like answered the call. Oh, that's good. Well, which that's, is, you know. That's beautiful, yeah. Really. Amazing US veterans. That's uh I guess right. so. Now this is this is a this idea, I love this idea. You guys, you know, for people who haven't seen the show, you guys go around and you encounter all sorts of uh, supernatural, obviously, beings. You're looking for Lucifer. You've got demons. There's all sorts of things going on. When but you it, say it like that, it's... Yeah, so... but it is how it is, right? That's how it is. So somebody came up with the idea that you guys would merge with Scooby-Doo, which <laughs> yeah. is basically what they did, too, right? Listen, Jimmy, at a, at, you know, 13 years into it, we got to come up with some ideas that I, are I outside think it's a great of the idea. box. Did you not like this idea when you heard it? I flipped for it. Oh, okay. I mean, good. I grew up watching yeah. Scooby-Doo. And, right. and, and so when they, they originally said, listen, we're thinking about an animated episode. Mm -hmm. Well, I immediately loved it because that meant time off. Yeah, it's um, easier for you. Sure, yeah. <laughs> then when I found out that it was uh, that it was actually going to be a Scooby Doo animation, then it was just we have all, a clip all bets were off of how it happens. Okay, take great. a look. Let's give this bad boy a test run, huh? What the hell? Dean, what just? Did... Ah! Ah! You're a cartoon. cartoon! I'm, I'm a, a cartoon. cartoon. Now, that's, and, that, and then you run into the gang. Is it G-rated in the way Scooby-Doo was, or are you still, like, tearing the guts out of people and uh, it, it, it walks. beating it hearts? It toes the line. Uh, <laughs> and we'll say that, that my character, Dean, um, ever trying to be the ladies' man that he's not, 
it was taken with Daphne. With Daphne, obviously. Yeah. Not not I a Velma of, guy. I kind no. of feel like she was a little curvier in this particular episode. Is that right? Of Supernatural. They sexed it up. They sexed <laughs> her up a bit. <laughs> I mean, there's a moment where the where the, the animated Dean looks at her. He's like, oh. <laughs> and then they cut to her, and it's like I don't remember her having that. Prime time. Well, there you go. Well, it's a special Scooby-Doo-themed episode of Supernatural, Thursday night, 8 o'clock on The CW. Jensen Ackles, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Jensen. We'll be right back with Dua Lipa. The Jimmy Kimmel Live Concert Series is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. The Jimmy Kimmel Live Concert Series is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. I want to thank Tyler Perry, Jensen Ackles, apologies to Matt Damon. Nightline is next. But first, this is her self-titled album here with the song IDGAF, Dua Lipa. <laughs> You've heard my songs Well, I'm too busy For your business Go find a girl who wants to listen If you think I was born yesterday You have got me wrong So I cut you off I don't need your love Cause I already cried enough I've been done I've been moving on Since we said goodbye I cut you off
talking in my sleep at night, making myself crazy. Come 